We are so humbled seeing that so many people that have really been a part of Nate's life. Nate would think that his word would be that was cool to have all the friends and family here together, that he enjoyed nothing more than playing with his friends and being with his family. I want to share with you some of Nate's qualities that um, him having got, gone through some difficult things that we just feel that he had a, a number of just character traits that we could all consider for ourselves. Nate was always on time. It's hard to believe he was mine in that. That <laughs> <laughs> it pleased him so much to get up at 7.00 that it, he didn't need an alarm clock. That, um, <laughs> that he wanted to be seven o'clock on the dot. And um, Nate was um, what his teacher called a rule follower that, um, he had written at school that um, it was being a good example to follow the rules and, and he tried to do the things that we asked him to do. Nate was what I always called our enthusiastic child. That uh, He was, what are we going to do today, Mama? And, and then what? And then what? And that was his personality from the time he was just so small that he was just bound down the steps in the mornings and was just so enthusiastic. His prayers uh, just nearly always included, and Lord help us to have fun today. And I didn't always understand the magnitude of that, but he did. He had a determined attitude. Nate had to take medicine every day and, and every month he took medicine that made him feel just generally bad and, and really exhausted. And he missed very little school because of it. And um, one day just lately since school has been out, I, just seeing him all day dealing with that, I said, Nate, how do you, I just don't know how you did it. And he just looked at me so adamantly and he said, I told myself to do it, that's how. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna have to tell myself to do a few things these upcoming days. Nate loved his family and he laughed with us a lot, all of us. Um, he, several years ago, he made up a game he called Run Tickle, and, he and his sisters knew it very well and never tired of it, that we made lots of laps through the house, chasing and tickling until they said, Pickle, please. <laughs> Nate was competitive, and um, I know all his friends <laughs> knew that that was true about him. In school, Nate wrote that, when he was in high school that he was going to be the best basketball player. And he wrote, if he was not the best basketball player, he was going to work to be it. He said, I will be a funny one too. <laughs> that was a trait in his sister Allie that he especially liked. He wrote, I want to be about 6'2", but my dad says I will not be that tall. <laughs> I do not give up on believing I will be that tall. <laughs> he practiced shots on his basketball court again and again and again. And he didn't show us any mercy. He would beat us 100 to zero if he could. <laughs> For that feeling that Nate's life was cut short, I want to share with you that a week and a half ago when Nate first came home from camp sick and he was able to play a game of shoots and ladders just trying to get him to do a little something. Um, he did win, I'm glad that he did. 
but at one point in the game he landed on the ladder that took him straight to the finish line and and he won well um, Nate wanted to be a famous NBA player and it was not the famous part that was a lure to him being being sick and um, open the door for different opportunities for him to be videoed and to uh, introduce a band and um, be in a little bit of the limelight. And um, Nate gave that up to his sister any opportunity <laughs> that he could, and she welcomed it. <laughs> but um, it was the, the playing basketball was the part that he desired. He wanted to be the best of the best and play with the best of the best. And Nate has skipped some steps of how tall he would become and proving out um, being that best basketball player. But he landed on the ladder that took him straight to the finish and he won. I have to say that if Nate did have that money that the NBA players had when we talked to him about just how much that was, his interest was to use it to retire his daddy so that he would be with them just all the time. And we've thanked God for Jeff's job, the people that he worked for that allowed him to be with Nate so much in these last two years. But Nate had a special, I'd be, I knew it would be hard for Jeff to hear me say, but that it would be really lacking if I did not say what a special, special closeness that he had with his daddy. And that was because of the love, because of the time that he spent with him that it was never a sacrifice for Jeff to do it. It was his greatest pleasure, and Nate knew that. Jeff made it easy for Nate to know that there's a Heavenly Father that loved him abundantly. We prayed with Nate in the morning. We prayed with Nate at night and many times in between, if that was the life that we wanted to, to have and to show him. He knew how to look up verses in his Bible, and Nate did love Jesus. He loved the stories of Jesus' healing those that were in need, and he especially loved the story of David and Goliath. His first Bible is all torn apart that section, we read it so many times. We know that Nate has made an eternal difference. And he has become, begun his eternity with our Heavenly Father. Nate worked hard to do a good job and we know that Jesus said, you did a good job, my precious child, just the apple of my eye. It is our prayer that no one will miss the miracle. The miracle of Jesus conquering death. for Nate, and we praise God for it, for you and for me. If you have not, choose to give your life to him today and live for him. If you've lived for yourself, as we all have suffered from, Let's live for him. May God bless each of us 
as we choose to surrender to him. May all the glory be God's. Thank you for your prayers for us.